Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the best TV show out there right now. What if I wanted to open a restaurant? They're hard and they're brutal and they're specific, but I know how to do it. This would be a different kind of restaurant. What we call this place? We've waited a whole year since the masterpiece of season two of The Bear, which if you recall, left Carmi locked in his own freezer while his staff was left to pick up the pieces on what was quite honestly, the most important night of everybody's career. While locked in said freezer, Carmi no doubt had the temperature get to him as he had a few choice words to say with his girlfriend just outside the door unbeknownst to him. As Carmi's crisis manifested inside of the freezer, things in the kitchen and the restaurant began to spiral. As pressure mounted for Sydney as she attempted to step up and take control of the kitchen, we saw the anxiety get to her a little bit, and we saw cousin Richie, whom I think had the best arc of all the characters in season two, we saw him step up to take control in a big way. His storyline in season two is one of my favorite storylines in all of television in the last probably three to four years. Now, season three starts off with the cast dealing with the fallout of the actions of the finale in season two. Carmi's childhood sweetheart, Claire, she didn't take too kindly to Carmi's cold words from the freezer. Carmi tries to play it off like it's just really not much of a big deal for him, but as the season progresses, we see that it's not nothing. He's off kilter. He's lost his equilibrium. And this season is very much Carmi's season. It's about his own mental growth and him getting the restaurant in a position to succeed. And they really try to go for broke this season. They attempt to earn their first Michelin star. You'll have to excuse my attempt at French, which sounded really nothing like French. I actually don't know what that was. In other news, in pursuit of their Michelin star, Carmi has pushed the staff of their restaurant to the brink. He comes up with a set of non-negotiables that he wants the whole team to sign and acknowledge. Naturally, his staff, such as Sydney and Richie, they're not too thrilled about that. One of the biggest changes is Carmi wants to change the menu every single day. Something that if you've been watching the show, you'll know that they've worked very hard to perfect up until this point. But if you want that Michelin star, apparently, Carmi says this has to be done. One does not simply earn a Michelin star with the same menu. In route to achieving this perfection, this Michelin star, we see Carmi's route to him becoming a chef. We see where he trained and with all the chefs with whom he trained, including with the dick, Joel McHale. Now, Joel McHale is not a dick himself, but the character he plays is in fact a dick. We also see Carmi train with the likes of Chef Terry, played by Olivia Coleman, and a few other chefs as he navigates his training years. Just about all of the chefs he trained with were very nice people who formed and shaped him, except for Joel McHale. And I think through seasons one and two, we saw the influence of the nicer chefs on Carmi. He fought against the training of Joel McHale. He didn't like how he trained him. And I think that because of that, we saw Carmi be nicer to people and he wanted to bring up his own people in his own way. Because as we learn in season three, Carmi was really scarred by his experience at that particular kitchen with Joel McHale. It caused him a lot of anxiety, a lot of nightmares. But at the same time, what's interesting is that in season three, we see Carmi access that side of himself, that sort of hard ass side of himself that was probably needed in order to get the restaurant where he wanted to take it. Granted, he wasn't as rude as Joel McHale's character, but he did have to have a firm hand with his staff and demand perfection from them, which he he undoubtedly learned by working with Joel McHale. And they have a fascinating and great conversation in this season finale that sort of explains that even though Carmi didn't like it, he didn't like how he taught him, he sort of got that it factor from learning under him. He was really put through the crucible of trials and he got through them and that really made him into the chef that he is now. My interest moving forward is seeing how Carmi integrates that part of himself with the rest of his personality because his staff was struggling to endure what Carmi was putting them through and they called him out on it and rightly so. So this season, like I said, was very much about Carmi's arc, showing how he becomes a leader, how he launches the beef off the ground. That sounds like a weird sentence. <laughs> we really see what it looks like to be an entrepreneur and the, and the grind that it is. The characters and relationships in this show feel so real to me. Interactions are very authentic. No character is perfect. And the struggles each character has, we can relate to them. And it's exciting to see all of these characters go through the sufferings of life 
in order to achieve a common goal of getting this restaurant up off the ground. There's a fantastic episode that features Tina and her journey into joining Carmi's staff. Tina is a grinder, let me tell you. She, you'll learn in that episode, she is somebody who needs routine, she's very conscientious, and she just needs you to give her a job, and she will get in there and get it done. Sydney's storyline in this particular season is also quite compelling. She is becoming more and more skilled through each season, and because of that, She's in very high demand, and she gets an offer from another guy who's attempting to open up his own restaurant, and it's a good offer. She's going to have benefits the whole nine yards. She's going to have creative freedom, and we watch her struggle with that choice because she's put in a lot of blood, sweat, and tears with Carmi and the gang already. Now, in this season's finale, of course, it all culminates with this big review that they're going to be getting, and as they're waiting for that review to be published, which will essentially make or break the restaurant and its funding, they all get together for a quote-unquote funeral of Chef Terry's restaurant. She's shutting it down, and she's going on to greener pastures. And in this season finale, I've got to say, it seems like they've brought in like actual chefs to come in and talk about their craft. It's either that or the acting is just so damn good in this last episode. Everybody is on point and on their A-game in this season finale. So it's a fantastic season three of The Bear. I highly encourage you watching the show if you have not started it yet. I'm sure most people have by now, but I loved it and I cannot wait for season four. And if you liked this review, please hit the like button, comment down below, let me know your thoughts. I'd love to know what you thought about this season of The Bear. And if you wanna hang out with me in the future, please hit that subscribe button. For now, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for my review of season three of The Bear, and I hope to see you in the next video.